Et oui, attention les amis, je viens de l'attraper. Il est là avec moi. Monsieur Rob Labotte. Attention, une sommité, un vétéran, et on va discuter à propos de son nouvel album, The New Truth. Hello Rob, how are you? Hello my friend, it's good to see you again, you're looking great. Absolutely, and you look younger and younger each time I saw you, you know. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm living I'm living I'm living pretty good. Good, good. So Rob, let's talk about this fucking new album. It's called New Truth. 13 tracks. My first question is, what's your feeling about this album? Ah. Wow. You know, this album, it uh, it just happened at the right time. You know, it, 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 it means so much more to me than just recording 12 or 13 songs you know, writing and recording 13 songs. It means so much more to me because it really helped me focus, um, you know, during this pandemic. And uh, I had to really kind of switch gears and I didn't have as many musicians in my studio. Yeah. yeah. And so to, to have something to focus on that, um, you know, it's a concept album, all 13 songs, all together, they tell one story in a way. Okay. So it, it really gave me something to to to, to focus on and to, and to keep my eyes on for the last couple of years, and I'm so grateful for that. Mm. What, what's what's your point of view when you 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 do a recruitment a recruitment? You know, you, you with Zender Lamotte. What's the feeling to play with his son, with your son? Well, what can you explain me? The explain me. Yeah, so playing with Xander, you know, he's been playing drums since he was a little tiny kid. When he was three or four years old, he wanted to play the drums. And he wanted to, sometimes he'd be playing a, what's called a djembe drum. It's like an African drum. And he wanted to play it. And it was almost as tall as him, but he wanted to get on stages with me at festivals and, and play. And he's always had rhythm. And because he's my son he's 30 now and we've had thousands of hours of making music and of communicating together so we kind of read each, read each other's minds yeah, yeah. and it, it's one of the greatest gifts of my life is to play music with him and he's become my my go-to my secret songwriting weapon he i don't want to write songs without him because really? He's such a beautiful musician, and we communicate so effortlessly. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Ah, cool. It's it's a, a really nice story, you know. It's it's really a nice story. Is it is Zender the little voice on your solo album? It's, I guess it was at the end of uh, Strongest Man in the World. No, you recorded this voice. It was Zender. No, you know. Xander and my son Josh, uh, and my, who's now 34, and my daughter Rose, who's now 26, they've all been on my record, sometimes because I invited them to play or sing along, but sometimes because they walked into the studio while I was recording. <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's a song uh, on one of my records, and it's called uh, Water. And at the beginning of the song, I started recording the... It's on an album called... Um, Above the Wing is Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And I started recording, I was recording a guitar part and I was going to do some singing. And just as I started recording, Rose walked in and she just started talking and I just left it on the record because yeah. it was really actually kind of perfect for the song. <laughs> um, the song's called Water and she walked in and she was just maybe two and a half years old. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, I want to get my feet wet. And she didn't know I was singing a song about water. She just wanted to go outside and get yeah. her feet wet, I think, on a hot day. But it's one of those things like, that is so perfect. So, of course, it's on the yeah. record. It's kind of so, synchronicity, synchronicity. Let's talk there's about. a lot of that. There's a lot of synchronicity if you have uh, three kids and your yeah. recording yeah. studio is just in your house. <clears throat> and there's constantly painters and poets and singers and writers coming in and out of the house, right? right? And my my kids were raised raised in that environment, so uh, there's a lot of synchronicity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, hey, Rob, who is James Harper? Is it is it a, a son of you? No. No. <laughs> James Harper is a is a is a guitar player from Boston, the city, not the band. And, and he reached out to me just just as the pandemic was kind of getting going and things were slowing down on the business side. And he just a random person reaching out to me. I didn't know him and he said, "Hey, could I send you some song ideas and can you let me know if you might want to write a couple songs?" And just the timing was perfect and I said, "Yeah, sure, send them to me." Mm. And then I liked I liked what he did. It was mostly acoustic guitar, kind of riff rock on acoustic. And I really I I liked it and I said, "Hey, can I have like total freedom to just decide what's a verse and what's a chorus?" And we had a conversation about music that we both love like King's X and Badlands and Almond Brothers and Archangels and we we had a lot in common as far as the stuff that we loved and you know a lot of the 70s kind of influences and that conversation led to us finishing a couple songs and thinking hey this this is great do you want to make more songs and then um we just kept going and After that first song or two, I asked Xander to come in and play some drums and help me arrange some of the songs, and then the whole record got heavier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just just I mean. naturally, I, I always follow Xander wherever he goes, and it got heavier. And and James was loving it as well, so we just kept going. And a good 13 alchemy. songs later, we had an album. Yeah. There is a good alchemy on the album. We we have listened to this album, and uh, for us, it's a it's a mix between your your songs when you're you perform your solo career and some classic rock like River Dogs. It's it's between just in the middle of this two atmosphere, I guess, with more liberty because there is piano, there is organ, there is saxophone there is there's a lot of ingredients inside so can you tell me about the, this this feeling of liberty of freedom when you you do this song when you cook all these songs you know the word freedom is the word on this album it was about creative freedom and and it's normally even with river dogs a beautiful band my beautiful yeah. beautiful friends we're like brothers we love each other it's a this effortless thing effortless gift in our lives But even then, sometimes there's like, we sort of, and maybe, hey, maybe it's me, maybe it's not them, but we kind of, we really aimed on the last record called California, we really aimed to have it be uh, kind of like a continuation of what we started with on yes. the debut album in 1990. But with Cross Country Driver, very quickly, James and I talked and said, Yeah, what would we do with cr total creative freedom? Nobody knows Cross Country Driver. We just made it up. Uh, let's just do whatever feels good. And that's what we did. So in a song, again, they all started out on acoustic guitar. And then uh, usually Xander would come in with and set up his drums in my studio. I'd get an electric guitar. I'd try to figure out what James was playing, the cool stuff he played, and I would do like a simpler version just so we, Xander and I could rock out. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, we would lay that down, and then James would go, oh my gosh, that's great, let's, and then he'd lay down some cool electric guitar, you know, some really cool stuff. And then we'd be like, what would be cool on this record, on this song? And then it would be, well, what about a violin? What about trumpets? Yes. You know, uh, what about yeah, no, uh, uh, a Mellotron? Yeah. Or... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and we didn't have any rules. We didn't have any guidelines. We didn't have any budget. Nobody was telling us how to make the record. Nobody was saying, hey, we're giving you this much yeah. money. Yeah. Give us a, yeah. this kind of record or that kind of record. It was total creative freedom. And that's how we ended up with what we ended up with. Yeah, yeah. we got a, a, a feeling and a, it tests Uh, like 70s uh, music, you know. Uh, I, it's a 70s attitude, but much heavier, but 70s attitude in this, the kind of freedom, of versatility of each song. It's different. And we appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate Rob. Good job, guy. Good job, good job, good job. Thank good you, job, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And that's so, exactly... I love hearing you say that because... Um, You know, in the 70s, 
bands were pretty self-indulgent, right? Yeah. They didn't yeah. necessarily follow trends. They just did their their thing, whatever it was. And we really tried to, well, we very naturally just, because we didn't have a manager, a label, yeah. we nothing, no publishers, nobody knew what we were doing. And we could just do whatever we wanted. Yeah. Some, some of the songs are five minutes long, some are three minutes long. Some of them fade out forever. Others have yeah. sudden endings. We just had no, we had a starting point, but we just went from there. We didn't pay attention to where this, where we started. We just went, yeah. we just kept going. Yeah, yeah. And just, it was really, really fun to make a record like that. Musically, it was really fun. And then at some point I did as I've done on the last few records I've made. And that was like, oh, this could be a concept record. This could be a, like a, a, an album that tells us some of my family stories. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? And stuff, you know, sometimes I changed locations. Well, actually the locations I kept pretty much the same, but you know, sometimes I changed the, the names in the songs or whatever. But I tell my, some, some stories. I, I tell stories about people in my family, my mom, my dad, um, my older brother, um, my, my oldest daughter, who I reunited with while we were making the record. Uh -huh. I hadn't seen her for 47 years, and I, wow. and I got to meet her in July of 2021. So the very last song on the record reflects the fact that I was able to reunite with her after 47 years. Yeah. So that's the kind of record we made. Yeah, my goodness, my goodness, you know. That's my goodness, that's the song. So, so Rob, tell me about th these guests called uh, uh, do 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 picnic do picnic is it is it true is it Mikey Mangini Mangino who, who, who's that guy who's that guy? Hi, this is Mike Mangini. Yeah, you know it's funny because you know I know I know some rock stars and James knew a couple rock stars and we <laughs> you know when we started thinking oh, it'd be great to have this person you know this kind of vocal or this kind of bass approach or these kind of drums, then we just thought, oh, who, like, who are we thinking of? And it was like, oh, we're thinking of Doug Pinnock. We're thinking of Mike Mangini from Dream Theater. And, you know, obviously Doug from King's X. Uh, Greg Chason from Badlands. Badlands, yeah. Uh, Rhonda yeah. Smith, who who was playing with Jeff Beck just until he passed away just very yeah. recently. Uh, Jimmy Wallace from Nashville, who was in the, the Wallflowers. You know, it was like, who, who would we get if we could get anyone? And everyone we asked said yes. Everyone did. Oh. Once they heard the music, when they heard the music, they were like, I want to be part of this. And people liked the vocals and they liked the songs. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone said yes. Wow. You know, wow. it's easy with it's easy with my friend Vivian from River Dogs. Yeah. Because yeah. he and I, we say yes to everything to each <laughs> other, you know. Same with Nick Brophy. If there's something yeah, yeah. that it, it, one it, of us is working on, the other ones are going to say yes if if yeah. if asked. But we we got yeses from a couple people that we barely knew, you know, and who we knew were are busy, you know, very busy musicians. So it worked out incredibly well. I mean, yeah. it, it was like a dream come true. We had like kind of a wish list of a couple people we might ask, and then they said yes, and wow. and the record is so much better because of that that input yeah 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 it's not, yeah. It's not a, a commercial attitude it's uh it's we talk about music freedom and let music do the talking you know uh, we appreciate really and nick nick is is always uh in your project you know he mixed the album did, did he yep. mix the album? yeah yeah he mixed the album and he mastered it as well um you know, after what he did on that last River Dogs record, California, um, you know, he was the first person I thought of as far as maybe mixing this album. And he's super busy. He's a really successful yeah, yeah. songwriter, producer, engineer, mixer. He's really a busy Nashville dude. He's right in the middle of like the, the heart of the music business. Yeah. And he said yes, and he said yes, you know, like, and I, I thought, I thought he maybe could do a couple songs, I didn't know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when we asked him, actually, we weren't making a record yet, I don't think. We were still just thinking, oh, we're going to record a few songs. Well, would you mix a few songs, Nick? You know? It's a, it's a, it's so. a kind of dream team. You know, your son, you know, Nick, the guest, uh, James, you. It's kind of dream team for us. We, we are very fond of your music. You know that. You know that. Uh, I know. I get, I get, I get, Rob, I got a friend for a few years. You and I, we've been friends for a while now, right? I know that. I know that. <laughs> and I, I, I so I, appreciate. I got, I got a secret I, question, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Same for you, buddy. That's, that's it. But, What's but you know, the... you, you get it. You understand music. You understand why people make music. Yeah, not really. Right? But... You might, you might be blue, but you're very smart. Ah, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. So I love the blue people. Listen to me, Rob. What's the secret of your beautiful voice years after years? There is a well, kind of secret. It's not possible. You're not human. It's got a auto tune or uh, electronics. So what's the secret? It's all the computer. It's all ah, the computer. Okay, sure, sure C'est un ordinateur. <laughs> I followed you down from the Coyote Hills. Early autumn, 1862. I'm ghost on the bank of the Rio Colorosa, looking straight into the heart of you. I don't know. Just wanted to make make sure the auto tune was working. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's built in. I have a chip. I have a chip inside. Ah, you got a chip. Because we, we, we saw many, many rock stars, you know, but the voice wasn't uh, uh, at the show. They, they, they lose their, their voice. But you, on each records, on each live performance, you got this fucking beautiful voice, you know. Is it the coffee? Is it the, the air you breathe? Is it the vegetables <laughs> you eat? Oh, <laughs> tell me the secret. You know, so, some people are fortunate, and I'm one of those people that um my voice i'm 64 years old and my voice no, no, still, no, no. You're, kidding you're kidding me you're kidding me you're not 64. no no and i still have i still have some youth in my voice and i do have some years in my voice as well but i can kind of control that so you know it's hard to go out like for me if i go out tomorrow and i'm gonna go sing with a rock band and everyone's gonna be super loud It's yeah. harder to hear what I'm doing and sing as well as I can in the studio because the studio is very controlled, right? I have, this is my space. This is my yeah. little world. I'm, I spend so much time here and I'm very comfortable and I can get it how I need it to sound. But then when you go out and you're performing, you don't always have the in-ear monitors or the great monitors to hear what's going on on stage. Sometimes it's really hard. And I can tell if someone can't hear themselves when they're singing because it, they're straining and they're they're trying to find the notes. Oh. It can be, yeah. <laughs> it can be difficult when someone's just banging on the drums and the guitars are so loud. It feels good, but sometimes it's it's a challenge. So okay. th that's part of it as well. And I'm taking care of myself, to be honest. You know, I've I've in the last 15 years or so, I've I've taken care of myself. I ride my bicycle and. And uh, you know, I eat good food, and I get to get to bed at a good hour. Yeah. So you know, a little red wine once in a while. That's about as wild as I get. Okay. That's that's the secret. So Rob, Rob, another <laughs> question about the album. What's uh, your favorite song on this album? Is it my my goodness, a quiet song, or a, a rock song? Your favorite song in in the new Truth album? You know. That's Just a great like question. I love the rock stuff. Um, I love So Fly. Um, I love um, A Man With No Direction. Those are kind of, those are a couple of my real favorites. I love I Won't Look Back. Um, you love all the album. Say, what was that? You love all the songs of this album. Well, that's a that's quite a few, but I have to say my favorite one is the 13th song, which is called My Goodness. Ah, me too. Um, because I'll be honest, we had the 12 songs and that was the record. 
And then I started to feel like, I feel like it needs one last song to just tie everything together. Because like I said, it kind of tells one story. Mm. All the 12 songs kind of told a story, but I needed something, I wanted something to tie it all together. And like I said, I met my eldest daughter just for the second time. I, I held her when she was two weeks old. And then I didn't see her for 47 years. And, and we've now reunited several times. She's been here. I'm to California twice to spend time with her and my three grandchildren. And um, I was talking to her. I think we were just texting one night, <clears throat> just kind of talking about things. And what stuck in my head was, was those words, my goodness. Mm. And I was thinking about her goodness. And I was thinking about the fact that we kind of we kind of, I don't want to say waited for each other, but we we kind of anticipated, I think, maybe connecting someday. Yeah, yeah. And so I wrote this song called My Goodness, and, and I, I wrote it in about 20 minutes, and I thought, this is the song. This ties everything together. This oh. makes this album make sense in every way for me. And oh. um, the next morning I recorded the vocal, and then we added some bass and my friend Justine sang amazing harmonies on it and uh, we have some violins on there um, and it just came out so beautifully and so simply it's it's the quietest yeah. thing on the yeah, album yeah. but I feel like it really ties all that heaviness yeah, together yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, it's the true song yes with deep deeper atmosphere and I like that I like that Right, yes, right. thank you, my little blue friend. Thank you. <laughs> so, Rob, uh, have you got a, a personal message for the fans? You know, some words for the fans that are looking at the show and they're watching the this duo show now. Wow, thank you for inviting me to to share a couple words. I, I guess I just, I guess I just want to acknowledge that <clears throat> you know the world. The world has gotten maybe more fractured, more confusing. I think in a lot of cases, whether that's relationships, personal relationships or politics or mm. government or or industry or just neighborhoods, feels like things are kind of challenging. I find that it's challenging times and, and a lot of people I know are finding it challenging. And I guess for me, what I keep going back to is family and and friends right and and just the simple things like are we supporting maybe people who don't have as much as we do you know i i always look at myself and say well i've got you know more guitars than i need i have you know a house and a, and a car and my my kids are grown up and they're safe and they're healthy and my wife and i are happy and and healthy and i feel so blessed and i guess i guess i just want to share some love with with people that love music and i hope i hope everybody's doing okay and i hope we can all just yeah. hang in there and, and and keep working towards you know more understanding and 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 loving each other okay samva samva it, it sounds good for me really Rob, it was a pleasure to have you in the show another another time, you know, and, and it's the end of the show. We got a tradition in the show. It's always screaming rock and roll. If you if you want to scream with me, a little rock and roll. And after it's time to say goodbye. See you next time. See you in France. I hope to you come in France and I will be there with all my crew. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. That sounds so good to me. I'm, yes. I'm ready to scream for, for rock and roll and I'm ready to come to France and hang out with you, my little blue friend. Okay, are you ready to scream rock and roll? I do the count. So ready. Three, three, so ready. Two, one. Rock and roll. <laughs> you, are, you are always a metal head. So, c'était Rob Lamotte Talk Show. C'est pour nous, The New Truth and Balance Génavité. Sander Lamotte, James Harper, Nick Brophy, toute la clique. Ça ne rigole pas. Allez, jetez une oreille sur cet album. See you later, Rob. Bye bye, guys. See you later. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Ciao. <laughs>
Oh, 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 oh,